And Summer lives here on KFM 94.5. And the last time we spoke to this amazing individual, she was up for a nomination for an international Emmy at this year's International Emmy Awards. It took place on the 21st of November, if I remember correctly. And she was up for Best Performance by an Actress. Kim Engelbrecht, welcome back to KFM Summer Breakfast. It was KFM Mornings, you know, a couple of months ago, but for the next three weeks, it's KFM Summer Breakfast. But welcome back. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I was yeah. very excited when I heard that I was coming in today. I think we just need to move your microphone oh, a little bit me, closer me, to me. you so we can hear your beautiful voice. I like to hang back. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. It's chilled. It's festive. And now... When we spoke last time, there was obviously lots of ante- anticipation leading up to the International Emmys. Now that we are a month after the International Emmy Awards, what was that experience like for you? I mean, I think just absolutely the lead up, um, the support that I got from South Africa and from everybody regarding Raika and just trying to push for the show and everybody sending well wishes. Um, that was incredible. And then being able to travel with your whole team mm. to... To New York City and you know experience that kind of a vibe. Um, yeah, in New York City is always a vibe. <laughs> it's always thrilling Never and been, exciting but yeah, yeah. and electric. You should go. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was really cool. And I think just there's a whole. Um, there are certain things and events that you do leading up to the event. So there are various cocktail parties, lots of panel discussions. There's also an evening where everybody receives a plaque and mm. a medal for being nominated, you know, wow. in their various categories and being able to meet the other actors and the other producers and, yeah, just a time to... Now, now spending time with, you could say, your international peers, right? Other, other um, uh, industry people, other directors and uh, behind-the-scenes people and also other actors. What was that like, meeting people from different countries, also up for, for their different awards and speaking about their experiences on their shows or their films? What was what was that like? Mm, I think there's one thing that really came through, especially in our category, you know, um, um, for the Best Actress. All of the female-driven dramas had some sort of a through line, you know. It's mm. a woman on the edge of a breakdown or a breakthrough um, also these strong um, females that just go against the archetype that's always yeah. set up for a female. You know, they, they're strong, they lead the show, mm. they, they're making waves. So that was really cool to kind of meet them and also find out what their process was, you know, how they've immersed themselves into their characters. And you also see that there's, very, there's, a, there's quite a few similarities in the way that we mm. prepare for work. That, that is brilliant. And also... Like you said, with these uh, female-driven shows and 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 showing that 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 strength, it also shows that, you know, the issues that you deal with uh, as women that is universal, as well. Mm. Like that, that everybody has to deal with that. And but what about the technical process of 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 getting, you know, the shows together and how South African productions differ from these international ones? What have you picked up? Um, I mean, I don't exactly know what goes into them mm. making those shows, the shows that were nominated for our in our category. Um, but I think there are obviously largely big differences. Obviously, when it comes to an international set, we're talking about bigger budgets, you know, mm. bigger sets. Um, obviously, a little bit more time goes into making shows. Um, but I think definitely South Africa is, is catching up. I mean, we're doing incredible yeah. work, you know. The fact that auditions come up and they're South African and people want to be part of them, you know. And it's, and, and it's exciting and it's a, an exciting time to be part of it. And, and with more and more streaming platforms popping up and they are craving uh, content not just from the country where the streaming p- platform has been established but from countries around the world. Even on Netflix we see like there's more uh, a call for more South African, more African more um, uh, European, but when I say European, Eastern European, like you see like Polish and, mm-hmm. um, you know, different kinds of countries that we stories are needed to be told. And like you said, we are stepping up. And, and, and with Reka especially, um, I feel that, that, you know, you can immerse yourself in that story so much that you get lost in it. And I think people are now craving season two. And I believe, when do you start shooting season well, two? Well, we, we start very soon. We start very soon. We start, um, I'm busy in prep at the moment, you mm. know, getting ready um, in terms of like getting my physically ready for it and line ready for it. Mm. And, you know, so it and, starts next year. And, and also mentally and emotionally getting back into, is, is it difficult getting back into 
that yeah reiki psyche and all I of think that I, I try not to put too much pressure on myself in terms of that because i can never recreate what reiki mm. was in the first season yeah you know she was she was different the the scripts this the season are very different um the themes are different the setting is different um so everything's different so i'm trying to approach her um from from new from mm. start from starting over that's brilliant because i that actually leads to my next question because with every character there has to be an evolution. Uh, there is some change that they go through. And without giving, obviously, we don't want to do any spoilers for season two, but from a character point of view, how do you think Reika is going to evolve in season two? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she does evolve. I hope she, um, yeah. How, I, uh, what, what is your hope then, if you don't know, what is your hope for her then in terms of an evolution? Well, I think for every, for all of these kinds of characters that go through so much turmoil that have to hold so much for everybody else, um, you want resolve, mm. you know, you want them to find some sort of answer. You know, sometimes we don't really know what our answers are. We go to therapy for it. Sometimes we watch TV. Sometimes we watch Raker <laughs> to try and find resolve. Yeah. Um, so I think it's a it's a big job for writers to be able to to use their kind mm. of psychoanalysis to find a resolve for the character. But I hope she does. All right. Now, any any other project besides Reika, any other projects coming up for 2023 that you can tell us about uh, that 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 yeah. we can get excited about as well? I mean, I think I think the the Emmy nomination has I think done so much for me. I think because uh, not only us just going to New York and being part of this incredible event, it's also just opened people's eyes to you know to talent abroad mm. and um, or talent in South Africa and in Africa. So um, I've been very lucky to be given some scripts, you know. Off the, Brilliant. Off, off the roll off of the Emmys. Um, so I'm just going through that and just seeing what, what, what lies ahead and what opportunities I can. That is amazing. And we've got Kim Engelbrecht in studio with us this morning. And this is after, obviously, we were rooting for you with the international Emmys. And ultimately, that award went to Lou Delage. Uh, did I pronounce yes, that that's correctly? Correct, yeah. Delage. And um, but you know what? For us, it, it didn't even matter because, like, when it, I mean, it's international image just to be nominated. And her performance was incredible. Yeah. So and 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 when you're in a category with like so many great um, professionals, you're you, just happy to be there. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now let's let's move in a different direction because one thing that I also see um, on 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 your Instagram, especially, is that and and don't worry, like I've I've been stalking everybody on Instagram. Jesse Clegg was here earlier on in the week, and he's like, "Dude, you on my Instagram a lot." I'm like, "Yeah, I, I needed to prep for the interview." <laughs> it's your job. But, you're interested in people. Exactly. So. Health and fitness is is also important. And congratulations, you're on uh, the cover of Women's Health. Thank you for January. Yeah, yeah thank that, you. That's amazing. Now, keeping in shape, like what I've noticed, uh, you know, taking running seriously early in this year is that there's, there's a lot of noise working in this industry. There's a lot of noise like in my head. There's a lot of things that you're thinking about at the same time. And exercise for me helps to quiet things down, to focus. Does it do... Do that for you or does not? Does it do that for you? Yeah, it does. Oh, I think for me, because I'm I'm competitive by nature, sometimes it stresses me out. I okay. really, it's a bit of a competition for me, you know, for the morning, for mm. that little hour that I'm that I'm working out. I, you know, I set myself a specific goal and I want to do well. But then there are other mornings that I arrive and I just, I just kind of want to go and have a coffee. Can we just maybe just <laughs> <laughs> not work out? So, so uh, when you say like uh, it's a competition, are you competing with yourself? Like wanting to better what you did like the day before or the week before yeah i think with um the kind of training that i do i start with very simple so you start with very simple movements and the movements become a little bit more complex mm. so you don't start off heavy you know you can only do what you can and then you get better you know you have mm. better muscle memory you become very good at an exercise um yeah but for me it, it is like that i mean because i do a lot of sprints okay like little like running that's mm. what my my workouts are based on lots of runs okay um yeah, short distance runs like a hundred meter five. And how has the you know the health and fitness aspect helped with with your acting? In a big way, actually. Number one, I I just think that being um, healthily and bodily prepared for anything. I mean, they can make you swim, ride, run, climb. They can make you do anything on set. So mm. you don't want to be in a position where you go, I can't. Yeah. You know, I don't think that I've got the. And also, you're not only doing it once; you're doing it many times over. Yeah. So you've got to you've got to pace yourself and be kind to yourself and be okay with what you can and what you can't do, you know? 
Um, and you also don't want to be stuck with an injury. So exactly. not only doing exercise, but also going to a chiro or a physio, mm. just kind of keeping the body ready for those highly intense four months that you are working or five months or six months. Um, but also I do a lot of stunt work. Okay, so you do your, okay. Not, All right. my, not completely no. my own. There okay. are professionals All right. there. But, um, but you yeah. like to do as much as you can. Oh, much as I can, but I'm yeah. very fine with handing out to the professionals. Because <laughs> you, you don't want to be Tom Cruise, 60 years old, doing uh, bike jumps off a cliff into a base jump. But he loves it. Yeah, he I'm does. Sure. <laughs> All right. And uh, we were talking a few minutes ago about the fact that the bar is definitely being raised constantly with South African and African productions. So what is your hope then? for the future because we see so many great productions i mean blood and water is quite popular mm. i mean reiko is is absolutely phenomenal there's so many great south african productions so what is your hope for the future how can we make it even better and take it to the next level i think co-productions are very good i mm. think the same with reiko having a uk co-production having Fremantle on board with an international distributor our show is in 147 countries so people become used to seeing what South African film and television looks like, what it feels like, what it sounds like, what our themes are, what our through lines are. Mm. So um, I've always maintained that once you do something once, you know, it just, it just the more you're able to do, you mm. know, it becomes easier, it becomes better. Um, so, you know, if you carry on with that vein. But yeah, co-productions definitely help, you know what I mean? All right, brilliant, thank an you. Exchange, yeah. An exchange, an of, exchange of skills. That is brilliant. Kim Engelbrecht, thank you so much for your time this thank morning. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Everything of the best. We can't wait to see what season two of Raker has in store for us. When when are you hoping to uh, release that? When, is it, when does it start? I actually shoot? don't know. We, okay. we start shooting very soon. Mm. Um, yeah, it will be it will be, yeah, it will, it will be a different feel. Yeah. And I hope the, the audience um, stay I'm, with us. I'm, I'm sure it's going to be absolutely phenomenal. This is the most music for your workday with EB English, KFM. Yeah, 94.5.